Warp Spinster here. Thank you for spending time with me today. I do appreciate that you spend time with me every week. I have a couple of updates on things that I've been working a bit on since I last talked to you, and then we'll do what I think will probably be a wrap-up or at least a last full session on the Dresden plate things. So first of all, the works in progress, I guess. I did finally stitch the gold circle onto uh, Party in Dresden. So that's ready for quilting, once I layer it, of course. And then I went ahead and stitched the gold circle and this applique circle. And I first of all, stitched on the yellow circle and I put a bit of interfacing underneath it, not fusible, just woven interfacing, non-woven interfacing, sorry, underneath it and then stitched. And it was, now I did the full circle, stitched around it and I used the cross stitch, which does not show it as a cross stitch very well how I did it. So. If I were doing it again, I might do it an invisible thread or do a different stitch or place it differently on this gold ring. Then I had stabilizer under that. So then I took out the stabilizer for that, uh, just cut around it because I didn't want that bulk and I knew I was gonna add more bulk when I applicate this one on. So then I took what I had cut off of this circle and used that as the stabilizer when I put this on top. And then went ahead and trimmed that out too. So um, I still have the stabilizer here and little bits of the, um, I'm sorry, this is the interfacing and then little bits of the stabilizer back there, but not much. So there was so much bulk already because of these applique lath strips. Also, um, someone had commented, sorry, I don't remember who, but she also thought that I needed to strip down in this corner. Originally, I had it here, and this was a blank corner, but I thought, you know, there's no reason why <laughs> I can't turn it around so that this section, which was up here, was actually down in this corner now and had that strip across there because I was cutting out so much here when this got laid on top, it made sense to have the part that had already pieced down here. Anyway, and then when I, I stitched this one on, I used invisible thread and a zigzag stitch. So I don't think this is ready for quilting. I think I have more blocks or something to add to it, but I did at least get that far on that one. I've been doing remodeling in my house and so I've been spending my days mostly doing that. And, and I did get Molly, my long arm machine, sent off to the spa to be re-energized with a new motor. That was interesting. <laughs> I haven't heard from them, so I'm hoping she arrived all right. I should call and check with them. But. And then I did some more work on the first It Makes a Village. I had this, I think, mostly done. I did add on a couple of the um, embroideries. This I'm not real happy with. I may redo that. Just using different stitches and crossing over it. Always making sure that I had some stabilizer in the back, which when I'm sure I'm finished stitching, I will remove as much of that as I can. It, um, it's been interesting. The first thing that I did was to these were on straight bottoms <laughs> and I, I don't know what I was thinking when I pieced them that way, but I decided I wanted to make these diagonals so that they really looked like they were winding up the side of a mountain. So I did diagonal cuts to piece those. This white is a warmer white than the rest of this. It's okay. I was using scraps and leftovers. I also went through and did just a zigzag stitch with invisible thread all around the edges here. These are fused on, but I wanted to make sure those edges were 
nice and tight. And then I did a couple more stitches up here. I'm still pondering if I do it this way, maybe you can get a little better picture of where it's at. I'm still pondering if I want to put some chimneys or something on these. Um, the embroidery is definitely adding a lot to it, but I'm thinking that I want something more and I'm not sure what. I gave some fleeting thought, it's maybe still in the back of my mind, to do various size circles to represent trees or something. I'm, I don't know. I don't want to do anything too cutesy or trite because it's not that kind of design. But an abstracty kind of thing would be okay. Do I want windows? I don't know. These, to me, look a little more modern, I guess, uh, abstract modern and I think if I start putting in pieces like doors and windows then it will start to look like a um a children's drawing I have nothing against children's I love children drawing and and doing artistic things and expressing themselves that's not what I want to do with this one so I think I I may put a wonky chimney on one of them just for fun and maybe I'll just start doing little bits of something on each of them to give them each a little more character. It's uncertain yet, but at least I've got the base <laughs> sewed together. This will be the edge here. This will be the left edge. And then I'll likely have some more negative space around there, but it's coming along. It's coming along. I also got out Alice, Alice Wondering, and the, I know what I call it in my head, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not announcing the name of the quilt yet or the design that I did with the funky pineapple geese. And I got those strips sewed together and I'm ready to do the next bit, which is actually putting it on the background. And I cut the white and I laid it out and it's the wrong white and that will drive me crazy. So I have ordered some more fabric and hopefully that will then put me on the right path to make a little more progress on that. I, I've got a bin of stuff behind me and I really, <laughs> and three doors of stuff to the left of me. I really have to get working on that. I'm feeling like the cannons to the left of them, cannons to the right of them thing. All yeah. right, so next up, I want to do one more thing with the Dresden plate design. And I don't remember what prompted me to think of this. Might have been a dream, might have been, I don't know. But if any of you are old enough to remember or have seen in heaven help us antique shops, <laughs> the old Viewmaster slide viewers, and I'll, I'll put a picture up here and you had round cardboard things and then little inserts of film all around the perimeter of the circle. And that had scenes in it. And you just, it was basically a magnifier and you clicked on it. And every time you clicked on it, it moved to the next slide. And it was a circle and you could just do it continuously. Anyway, I love those things. I think they're fun and funky and I wanted to do, I thought the Dresden plate thing would be a good thing to do to mimic that um, slide circle. I don't know what they called it. Slide, meaning the view slide, I don't know what they called it. Um, and to do that, I want to have some black on white fabric, preferably with some writing on it because there was always writing that would tell you what you were looking at and then do the the film spots as, well, could be a print, but bright colors in any case, whether it's a print or a solid. Now, you could do it as a sort of free form slicing at different angles, at random angles, which is what I've been doing. If you're not really comfortable with that or you want to try something different, you have some ruler op options. So you want to look for a wedge ruler and there are all kinds of them. I have a couple examples here. This is a Dresden plate ruler. Let's see if I can find some white fabric here. It's a Dresden plate ruler and 
Come on, baby, focus. Focus. Is it going to focus? Apparently not. Oh, I know, I've got it set on the light setting. It doesn't let me focus. All right, this is a Dresden plate ruler. This particular one is from Darlene Zimmerman, uh, Easy Quilting. And I don't know if Darlene is still in business or not. This is from a long time ago, but you can find other Dresden plate rulers and those will work fine. Um, they generally, well, they may be different angles depending on how many blades are going to go into it. So it might be designed for, I think probably 12 is the most common, or it could be that it's designed for 16 or whatever. This one is for 12 blades around the circle or 12 petals. There are also various wedge rulers you can get that designers have put out for their particular patterns and they will be different angles here. So you might find one that's, you know, a six degree angle and a 13 degree angle or whatever. And that will just determine how many of these blade units or wedge units are needed to complete a circle. One that I have used quite a lot actually is uh, from Block Lock, which is one of my favorite ruler companies and it's for Bloomin' Cogwheels. And I taught this class a few times at the local quilt shop, so I have several of them. And these are designed where you start out with strip sets. So alternating colors are however you want to do it. And then it has grooves cut here, or channels cut that are a quarter inch wide. So they just, this just sits down and locks on top of the seams, the quarter inch seams on the strip set, and then you cut this wedge out. You don't necessarily need that for what we're doing today, but, or for any of this sort of, <laughs> this would be, I guess, sort of improv piecing, maybe a little bit what we're gonna to do today would be. But if you really want to have the angles already set for you, or you want it to be a circle instead of a sort of a circle, then you could use a wedge ruler uh, to illustrate what that ruler does. It, it's really a lot of fun. If you're interested in this kind of thing, then the cogwheels rulers are fun. So this is the sample quilt that I made for the class that I did. And you put these together, you sew these together, and then these ends are appliqued what that was about oh ah. and then I um, at the end these are something I'll do a Dresden plate thing but this is a pointed end Dresden plate but you can see I started out with strip sets a strip set that was this red then this print and then this black print the gray print and the black print and then the ruler I don't know if it was this particular ruler they have different sizes of blades. So this one isn't quite it, but then the, the ruler would lock down on top of the seams in your strip set and you cut from the strip set. And then, so that you can flip them and sew them together. And they're really a lot of fun. You have all kinds of options for what you could do. There's a book that gives you different options. So it's a lot of fun. And this was from a wonderful Christmas line from maybe timeless treasures don't quote me on that but it was a red and gray silver uh, collection so all right it's slightly off topic but i i just really do love these these cogwheels so i think for what i want to do today i do want it to be a pretty clearly a circle I wouldn't need to do that, but I think for simplicity's sake today, I am going to use a wedge ruler. This is a five blade, which means five of these will make a quarter circle. So, or I could use this, which I'm guessing is going to be four blades would make a quarter circle. Um, because you're more likely to have this one, I think, hmm, 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 hmm. I do want some things to be longer, so maybe I will 
stick with this one. See, I want some blades, some of the blades to be long and some short and they don't meet in the middle kind of thing. So I think I will use this one, but any, any wedge ruler will work. It just depends on how many pieces you want to go around the circle. All right. Although I don't have much white on black for that size, kind of think of it. All right, let me pull out my, I've got my fabric samples from my collections here. So this would be a fun one. These are just eight inch square samples. So I haven't, oh, this actually would be pretty good. We kind of mimic the writing not being solid that would be kind of big this one's a little big for what i'm thinking of of course all of this may just turn out to not work but i can order more fabric and that one i think i'm choosing to go with black on white because I'm sort of mimicking that writing on the on the slide circle so I guess maybe I'm making kind of a smaller one <laughs> to begin with. Or do I have some more black and white I might use for the longer ones? Right, this is the one I could lay my hands on quickly. So I will use this for some of the longer blades. I thought about using one of my black and white stripes. These are a little bit different. Uh, this is a warmer white and this is a cooler white and the blacks are a little bit different but that'll be okay that'll be okay i could also do every other blade will be white that's a possibility or a bright color i don't know but let's get started with these anyway i did when i was ordering the white fabric because i needed something that i knew was going to to be the right white. I also was looking, for, well, I don't know which came first. I was looking for some fabric that had actual black writing on white. And in the process, I just said, I just order the white fabric that I need. So I did order something that might work for this. Well, I know it will work for it unless it's larger than I think it is. And I found a couple other black and white prints. This was on fabric.com. Um, K facet, some black and white prints, which I think would be kind of cool. And I'll show those to you once they arrive. Should be here by next week anyway. And my small quilting group is taking one of our elderly members down to Hannibal, Missouri, Hannibal, Hamilton, Missouri, for Missouri Star Quilt Company. All the rest of us have been there and she just really wanted to go. So we're gonna make it a day for her and take her down there and I'll, I'll look for some other black and white prints while I'm there. I don't really need, I don't really need any more fabric, mind you, but I'll see what I can find. Anyway, so I will do a blade from here and I can decide where I want to place it. And I'm thinking that I want to put it somewhere that the top of it has more white than black. That's where I'm going to place my square of, well, it could be a circle. It'll look more like a moth, which is necessary. Oh, well, there's another thing you could do with these wedges. Do butterflies and moths and applique on circles and whatever, so that would be kind of fun. Anyway, <laughs> back to the task at hand. So I could have it either where the bright fabric is going to fall on the white or the darker. Well, we'll just try it on different ones. What the heck? So I'm going to do sort of fussy cutting, I guess. And I'm going to make this as long as possible, whatever I have on this ruler, because I can, and I can always shorten it up later if I want to. So, and I want the center of it to, 
So this isn't really very improv -y. So we're just gonna call it a hint of improv. All right, and I'm gonna cut this off screen. I'm just gonna cut around it. It's gonna wiggle the camera and nobody wants that. I have one blade cut and the edges. I have some things for crumb stack or another project. And now I can just reverse it. I wanna save fabric. If I want a really specific thing, then I don't need to line this right up, but just know that you can. And I think I want this more here. Try to keep it relatively straight down the middle. And then cut that one out. It's just nice to be here and not be painting or moving furniture around the house. <laughs> There's a good feeling of satisfaction about seeing things turn out the way I hope for them to turn out, but there are lots of little steps along the way. So it's nice to just spend some time with you all today. Now I could put these wedges right next to each other, but eh, looking at it from farther away, I don't hate, hate it, but I don't love it. So I could do a white strip in between I could do one of these. Let me do one of these. And it's going to necessarily be shorter because it's a shorter piece of fabric. And the blacks and the whites are a little bit different, but it's okay. And I can use any part of this. The angle is always the same, so it doesn't matter. It's about here. I either want it wildly off or pretty straight. So I'm using, I've got a center line on the ruler and I'm lining it up um, along one of the C shapes here. Just, I guess I don't need to waste fabric, I could do this. Um, just because I will notice it if it's just a little bit off. So I wanna make it pretty straight to my eye. If I were doing improv, I probably do not do this if you are not comfortable doing ambidextrous cutting. Safety first. All right, now I have a piece for the crumb bin, but also a piece that can go in between here. So I could have these go up and say one come down more. This one is, the bottom is not going to be there. Let's make it fairly short. So this is what I'm thinking that the blades are going to be different and the center is going to look quite funky probably. They are not going to meet in the center. It is not my intention to make them meet, but I do want it to be a circle. I think I want to, oh, there we go, looks better when it's right set up. I think I want to put some kind of buffer strip in there, rest for the eye between all of these black and white prints. Could be a white strip, could be a bright strip, but I think I want to really focus the bright on those slide pieces. So I think I'm gonna try adding a white strip. And I don't think the one inch strip insert rule will fit here. So what I'm going to do is test it. It's the easiest thing to do. My brain just, you know, I like math. <laughs> I could sit down and reason this out, but I just don't feel like it this morning. So I am going to, I thought about just doing a half inch strip, but then, and that's replacing the, the quarter inch I would take off with the seam, but then that will be entirely taken up when I seam it there. So I'm going to do this 
No, it's still going to end up being taken up in the seam. So what I would need to do probably is cut, say, a quarter of an inch off the edge of this. You know, if this flops, we'll just know that it flops. And I want this to be a narrow strip in between. I could put an entire wedge in, um, but I'm going to start doing with doing this quarter inch, quarter inch off here. And then I'm going to sew this on and then I'll put the ruler back down and we'll see where we stand. So I'm gonna go and just seam this with a quarter inch seam. So I trimmed a quarter inch off this side, did a quarter inch seam, and now if I lay this template back on, I think I'm gonna have a quarter inch seam, I mean a quarter inch left after I seam it to the next piece. So I think I'm good to go. I'm going to trim this back to that side. Sorry about the wiggly table. At least with the new table, it doesn't wiggle as much as the old one did. Alrighty, I press that toward the print, by the way. And now when I sew this to whatever goes next to it, it will have just a narrow strip of white in there. So let's mimic that here. And then put this piece under here. And then that piece. So that helps to break those up a little bit and it's not quite so in your face. Now another option would be to cut an entire wedge of white and put it in or a wedge of black as well or black strips. Maybe alternate white and black. That I think I'm going to do the same thing to this other side. And then I'm going to work on getting the um, bright colored piece up here. And then that will help visually for us to decide how we want to put these together and what we want in between. So I am going to trim a quarter inch off here, add on the white strip and trim it up. And we will then take a look at what we want to do up here. I don't think I want to do a circle. I think I want to do a square. And as I recall, the slides had sort of rounded corners. So if I'm applicating that on, I can easily do that. Prints might be kind of interesting, but I think I would want to do a print on a smaller black on white print, because this is so bold, I don't want to add more stuff into it. So I think we'll do a solid on this one, do it a solid. And we'll see how that goes. And I think I do want rounded corners. Depending on the fabric, it might kind of bleed through. So may or may not be a bad thing. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I want to get to the point where I can start playing with that. In the process of doing this, of course, this makes this black and white print narrower, that blade narrower than this one. It, the geometry, the, the um, cumulative <laughs> degrees here are the same, but it means these blades are going to be different widths and the black and white portion of it are gonna be different widths. If, for example, I don't do white trim on this, and I wouldn't expect to because I've already got something between it. Seeing that if I put these next to each other, then I could line these up so they do that bendy there. 
but line up, or I can skew it so that they don't line up at all. It's going to depend on what your eye wants those to do. And that may not even be next to that. It may be something else entirely. And then have another white strip before we do that one. So decisions for a later moment. Right now, we are going to think about a spot for that, a little bit of film. So I will pull out my crumb, which has turned into kind of my scrap box too, and it's getting pretty full. So let's see what we've got. I have this yellow, which is a bit of a print, which would be good. I have this solid green. I think all of these are gonna need a little bit of, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> fabric under, or something underneath to prevent the shadowing, or I could do a reverse applique thing. Put this underneath and then cut out the black, which actually would be more in keeping with the film slides because the film slides are sandwiched between two pieces of cardboard. So that's an option. So I don't want to worry too much about that when I'm choosing the fabrics because I want to be able to choose them without prejudice. This I'm going to keep because it, it's a reverse applique piece. So I don't want to cut that up. Or I have this yellow print, which is probably too large for, it depends on where I cut it, but it is a thicker fabric, so it will shadow through less than some of the finer fabrics. But I think that's too large a print. This is about the right size if I applique it. Let's go with that just as a start. So I'm, I'm anticipating to be roughly that size. It's a pretty, pretty good piece. And they don't have to be absolutely square. We could have those be a little funky. I think I might like to do that, actually. Does that sound really bad? <laughs> what do you think? I think I'll start with this one. And do I want it to be a funky shape or not? Oh, that would be fun if it was on a solid. Okay, so let's start with this piece. Enough hemming and hawing and playing around here. Let's, first of all, I'm not going to be real precise about it. This is about the width I want. And sort of squarish. Were they square or rectangle? I don't remember, it doesn't matter. This is not a faithful reproduction. And there is that piece. If I were smart, of course, I would put some fusible web on the back. But I think since I just cut it, I won't get, you know, I might get rattling when I, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I've got some, I will put some fusible web on here. I think I might round off the corners and I might not be too precise about it. Maybe I want it to be kind of funky. So rounded corners, but not necessarily even any way you look at this shape. If I'm going to make it uneven, I have to make it pretty wildly uneven so it doesn't look like I'm just really crappy at cutting, which, you know, is the truth, but <laughs> I don't have to admit it. Maybe I want a shape like that. Maybe a little different shape on the next one. I like it. So I am going to fuse that on. You know how to fuse. You don't need to see that. I also have a choice of whether that's going to be straight up or if I'm going to turn it. I think I might like to turn it just because there's a lot of sort of rigid stuff going on. And I would like to just 
twist it enough so that it doesn't look like I made a mistake in placing it, but isn't too funky. Maybe a little funkier than that. All right. Oh, when I was taking the, the backing off of here, I actually, I'm always tempted to, to fold back this corner and then loosen that corner and pull it, but then it can ravel that. So I just take a straight pin, turn it over and score the back of the fusible, and then you can bend it apart and pull it out from that score. I have a choice here. I could use an invisible thread and a monofilament thread and go around with like a zigzag stitch if I want this to be, uh, the applique to be relatively invisible, or I could do a decorative stitch around it. But I have to remember that I want a stitch that can go around these curves and that isn't going to be such a long motif on the stitch that coming around to this corner and having to meet here isn't going to look um, way off. So I think I'm just going to do, just for this first one, do a zigzag, reasonably narrow zigzag, which will, I think, look all right when it comes to this point. I can start out with a very narrow zigzag, make it larger, and then narrow it again when I come back down here. I'll see how it goes. I probably will just start this a little further down, not quite at the point, come around and then try to get those to meet as best I can while still covering that point. We'll see what, we'll see how that goes. I also have the option of, do I want to do a blue? I have a metallic blue kind of thing here, or I have these out for the makes a village, or I have more of a teal kind of look. Neither of which matches perfectly, but maybe I don't want to match perfectly. Or I could do white, and that would set it off more. I think I'd like to do the teal, this greener teal. See how that looks? We're just plain. And here it is stitched. This is a pretty small piece for going around curves, so I did the needle down and, and pivot a little bit on the way around. One of the things that I also like about the zigzag is that if you do a reverse stitch to help lock those stitches, then it follows itself back, which is quite nice. So that one turned out fine, just fine. How about this one? This one I'm not going to border with the white. So I need to decide, do I want to make a larger one of this type? Or do I want to keep them all the same size? Of course, if I wanted to mimic the, the slide circle better, they would be the same size, but we're not doing that sort of reproduction, so we could do whatever we want. Um, I might even do just a, almost like a slit. Um, oh, no, never mind, Karen. We won't go there. <clears throat> I was thinking of doing like a, a slide where it has the sprockets on the side, like a film. Hmm. Hmm. Huh, maybe later. So I want another piece here, and I could do just a narrow slice of it. Would be kind of different. Just some sort of, of aperture. I could make it a pretty good sized one because this is going to be a wider wedge. I was thinking as I was sewing this that you could do kind of a peacock feather sort of thing where you're using those lovely blues and greens on peacocks and do wedges that have those going up and down. Anyway, that's another thought. You could also, if you were using a cogwheel ruler, or even if you weren't, you could insert, like do a strip set, and then insert just some white here as if you were 
setting off sections of writing on it or just do some strips of color here. That's kind of, I kind of like that idea. What if on this alternating set, we inserted some strips of color here? Even one strip of color. Hmm, hmm. Let's see what we have. Well, we've already seen what I have. What might we make use of? Here's a, I'd have to have, I want to start with an inch. I'm sure that's an inch all the way down. Well, yeah, that'd work. We could use this piece and insert it somewhere. And then I'm thinking like a gold of some sort, don't you? It'd be an inch enough to, we'll try it. May hate it, <laughs> but that's always the case when we're playing around with these things, isn't it? So I'm going to cut these into one inch strips, or at least as much of it as I need into one. Oh, the one inch doesn't really matter, remember, because we are doing diagonals. Um, I mean, it sort of matters, but one inch. Okay. Well, well, yeah, the one inch will matter. Yeah, if we do just one inch. So let's start out with one inch because I, I need this whole angle thing here. No, I could trim it down. If I do less than an inch, then I will have more than I need so I can trim it to the size I want. I don't want to do more than cut inch because then that will bring it in too much and I won't be able to. Lessons we learned a couple weeks ago, right? So I will make this, let's do a narrower strip up here if I have a, yes, because I don't know that that's going to be an inch for very long. <laughs> Long enough for what I need up there. And then another piece down here. And then the question is, do I still want, I still want, I think, to have a piece up there. So maybe I don't want to do two strips. Maybe I just want to, no, I think I want to do two. And then have a third piece up here, which may be, I don't know, purple or something. All right, so I'm going to cut these to a width and then I'm just going to slice it. I'll come back after I cut these and we'll slice that, slice that up and see how it goes. All right, I cut this at half an inch, so that's going to be a very narrow. Now I need that to be three quarters of an inch, don't I? Yeah, all right, I will cut another one. And then this one is cut an inch. Let's see if I've got enough to do. I may have to swap these out because you're going to be learning lots from my errors today, aren't you? Or you're going to be laughing a lot. I don't know which. Either one's fine. <laughs> I laugh at myself all the time. Do I have enough to do three quarters for as much as I need? We'll see. Okay. There's that. I could always applique. Well, that's the other thing I could do, of course, would be to applique some strips on here instead of splicing them in. That might be a good thing to do too. But let's splice it in with piecing for the moment. And so I'm just going to do some sort of angle here. And then down here, some sort of angle like this. So then I'm just going to splice these in with quarter inch seams and try to match up these edges as best I can. So that one is trimmed up, inserted, and those are trimmed up. Got the correct angle, and now I need to decide what I'm putting up here. Do I want it to be pretty similar to this? Maybe just turned a bit. Do I want it to be 
longer than it is wide. Let's try out a couple of things here. Here's a purple strip. If it is, let's see, we make it longer than it is wide. Do I want to do that or do I want it to be pretty consistent around? I think I want it to be reasonably consistent. It can be turned, the sizes can be a little different, but I think it, I want it to be pretty, pretty close to at least the same sort of shape. Brought just a few up from my stash. I thought I might do the orange. No, I'm not sure. It might be kind of dull for my purposes. I'm thinking the pink. This is crazy for me. Pink and orange. Who would have thought that at some point in my life I would be doing pink and orange things? They're lovely colors. They just weren't my favorites earlier in my life. Okay, that will shadow through a little bit, but I think I can live with it. We'll just say that that's some of the images on the film coming through. And I'm going to put a little bit of fusible web behind it before I cut the shape which will be roughly like this, maybe a little larger, maybe a little smaller, maybe pretty similar. And then I will fuse it on here. I was just thinking about another possibility, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, I fused this on and cut the shape. This is what I was talking about when I score the back with a pin. And that opens up a piece I can peel from there. I'm doing it rather inelegantly, of course, because I'm on camera. Easy peasy and then I don't wrap a lot corner. That point. The jury is still out for me on whether I like those strips running through. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do it on every piece. It kind of detracts from this. But, you know, lessons learned. I think I'll go with that. And then put some stabilizer behind it, which I failed to do here. I was so excited about getting it on that I on this piece that I did put the stabilizer under it. And then stitch around that, I have, eh, that's kind of yucky thread, isn't it? I mean, it's not yucky thread, it's not the right color for that. I know what would happen. Now I think I'm gonna go find a better pink. And then I'll stitch. This is shadowing through a bit, which isn't bothering me. If that's something that you don't want in your piece, then you could, could just not use fusible some stabilizer under there, stitch around it, and then, or just just put fusible on the very rim here. Then once you take the stabilizer out, if it's not fused, you can pull the pink and the black and white print apart. Snip, just take a little snip in just the black and white part so that you can get your scissors in in between the black and white print and the green and then just trim that out. Just the black and white print and you're left with just that pink then. All right, there's blade number two. Jury's still out on these. I think it's okay, but we'll see. And I could put another blade in here, of course of this same print as that one with the white strip in between. I don't think I want to do a black strip. I think I want white. And I do kind of want these quite different lengths. 
So I might even, when I cut another one, extend that angle out up here and just make it much longer because I do want them quite different in length. And so they aren't meeting down here and they aren't around up there. Um, I could, if you're doing Dresden plate and you want pointed bits, then you fold it in half right sides together, stitch a seam there, and that forces a point there and you turn it. I don't think I want a point on these. I don't know that I want them rounded either. I think I'm going to, you know, in the circle, of course, it would be rounded, but I don't think I'm going to do that. And I do want some radically long ones here, as well as some shorter ones. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find <laughs> enough of this white to edge this. If, if you didn't want to do this, because I'm going to be applicating this down, you could... No, I'm not going to... I'm not going to think about that. You could just space these out and applique down the individual blades because I'm probably going to be applicating this on white anyway, so it, it looks redundant, but I think it's going to be easier for me to hang on to the correct um, cumulative degrees going around the circle. If you weren't concerned about the circle being a circle, then you could just um, add, you know, separate these as I did on the, let me grab that. <laughs> so here, there isn't a white strip inserted. I just pulled these apart and applique them with that background showing between. So you could certainly do that with this. And in fact, I kind of like that different angles on the ends but I don't know that I want to do it here because I've got these that I want to be for the end there. Noticing this is pretty close to the edge here, but I'm gonna be applicating that edge, so I don't have to worry about the seam. All right, so I'm going to edge this with white just to kind of see how it looks. The other thing I was thinking about, I don't know if it would look good or not, but you could take a curved piece and cross it over this white bit too and pull those together more. So maybe we'll take a look after I um, edge this one and see how that looks. Just do a quick bias strip and see if that looks good or not. We'll find out. I will edge. I decided to do that orange on here, so I will put some stabilizer under there and Ooh, what do I have for orange here? Eh, it'll have to do. Okay, I don't have a lot of oranges. Not surprising because I haven't been an orange fan in the past. Now we wanted to see what we thought about thinking maybe this color of a bias strip and I did of course didn't do the bias strip so I will stitch this down and do a bias strip and then we'll see where we're at. Turns out I did not have enough fabric to do a bias strip with the blue so I did pink instead. It's a pretty rough bias strip but it will give us the idea. First thing I want to do is tuck this under here because I don't expect it to be going over that section as well and then I could do a curve across there, maybe. I could, but do I want to do that? <laughs> there is a danger to adding too much, too many different things at least for this piece, I think. I like to have the eye always have something to 
move around but have places to rest. This white is a place to rest. Do I want anything crossing that? Even though it's just a short stretch. I'm not sure about that. This isn't going to stay very curved after I let up on it, but, and I don't think I want it to be too vertical, so I don't want it angled like that so much as this. So there isn't going to be much of it. Will you even be able to tell that it's curved? Only if I do a pretty serious curve up there. Maybe I want it to be more straight across rather than mimicking one of these angles that it's right next to. So maybe just a simple single curve rather than an S curve. That looks like a frown. We would want to smile, wouldn't we? Which would tend to draw the eye up instead of down. I don't know how I feel about that. It's a possibility. Block that off so you... I'm not sure that I like it. Sorry, I'm shaking the table a lot here. I don't know that there's enough place for a curve there to make it, because I'm going to lose a quarter inch still on either side of that. I think my eye is happier with it, not there. That does not mean that I wouldn't want it on the next piece. So if, say, I do another shorter piece, would I maybe like to put it on that? I think I want to keep these pure, <laughs> such as they are. And this is not to say that if I get more, there are the two K-Facet prints. I think it might fit in here all right. And so I may use those instead of having these so close together. But they're quite different. This one, this has more black there. It's just the, uh, oh, this is kind of interesting. This looks like a butterfly, doesn't it? With those four or something in the middle. Oh, it must be time to quit. I am just going off on all kinds of tangents. So there are some possibilities, and then I would keep going around with this. I want to wait till I have more choices in black and white fabric to see what I might want to do next. But I think that is in general. I'm trying to make sure I'm still in frame when I'm moving these. So you can see the back too. Let me zoom out a bit. And it would look different on white. Let me grab a white board to put under it. There's a handy dandy white foam core. I think I, I'm liking it. I want to wait and see how it looks when I move more pieces over here. That may be too much. It may be that I need to insert here and there just a plain white wedge if this starts to look like too much. And I could try putting in a, a bright colored wedge. I think that would detract too much from, this is what I really want the focus to be on, which is another reason I don't want to put a stripe down here. It's good to have this broken up once in a while, but I don't want to do it on every blade because that takes the focus off of those. So this is only going to happen at most every other blade and it may not be that often. 
and it may be that I only have one going through on some of them. But it is a way to, to I'm pointing to it on the camera, how's that? There is, it is a way to kind of tie these colors together. So as I'm adding in strips, there's going to be one that's pink, which will start to, to pull those, pull the whole thing together when I start duplicating some of these colors. I think that's it for our, I guess, scenes from Dresden or something <laughs> with our little film strips there. I will, next week, um, we will be making that road trip, girls road trip. I'll see what I can get done if I, I don't know when I'm going to get the fabric for one thing. Um, I don't know when they're, well, I think it is shipped. So if I have a chance to, to do some more, I will try to do that before next week. If I don't, maybe we'll do a little more on this next week. I thought I was going to kind of wrap this up, but maybe not. That is it for now, however. Thank you again for joining me. Please like and subscribe. That always helps. I also love reading your comments and suggestions. They're very helpful to me and also to others who might be reading the comments. So please share your thoughts and ideas in the comments or questions, of course, always questions. I, ha I am hearing what some of you are asking for in terms of, of future things like um, putting disparate blocks together. Um, which I might do with what I have or show you some other blocks I have, some um, blocks that I have from different projects and try and put them all together into a quilt. So I am hearing that. Um, I have a couple other things on the list too that you've asked for. So I'm not ignoring you, I promise. I am reading the comments and I do appreciate them. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. I hope I'll see you next week. In the meantime, be well, be safe, be happy, be quilting. Peace out. Mm -hmm.